Marhaba ya jama. I think I said that really badly. Anyway, so today we're going to be speaking about the Jordanian wedding. <laughs> Guys, I script every video, like, not like word by word, but like the general gist of what I want to be saying because I have a memory like a goldfish. So, and I have it all set up next to me so I can flick back and you'll see me do that during the videos. Anyway, I don't know why I'm still talking about this. The point is that I scripted a whole video about the Jordanian wedding and realized it might be about 45 minutes long. So, Today, I am going to take you through the main components and like the things that I feel like are the most exciting parts of the Jordanian wedding. And then in the future, we can keep doing these. So over a period of time, I can explain it to the foreigner who doesn't know anything about a Jordanian wedding. So the characteristics of the Jordanian wedding in comparison with the European wedding is that they are loud and they are bright and colorful and it's basically a massive party. And the best way to kick off the wedding party is with the Zefe. So the Zefe is a band of men that you hire to come to the bride's house with the groom and his, and his immediate family to take the bride to the wedding hall, the Saal. So depending on where you are from, the Zephyr band might be Jordanian or they might be Palestinian. They might sing traditional Palestinian folk songs or they might sing traditional Jordanian folk songs. They might wear a red scarf, uh, a shmag, or they might wear a white and black scarf called a kefir. But essentially, like they do the same kind of thing. So they have big drums, tabla, and they bang on the drums and they jump up and down and they sing traditional songs. It is so much. Fun. I am not kidding you. So the first person to come into the house to collect the bride is actually the bride's mother or the like the most prominent female in the family. If it's not the, the mother, it might be the aunt or something like that. And she comes in doing this chant called the M <laughs> uh, Take two. She comes in doing a chant called the Mama. <laughs> Maha. Why can't I say it on camera? I can say it off camera. Maha. She comes in doing the Maha. <laughs> She comes in doing a chant called the Mhaha, which is this high pitched, extraordinarily loud noise. And they, and it's like, you know, so they also do like, like this. Um, I've forgotten what that's called in Arabic, but we call it ululating in English. So you'll have women coming in and doing that as well, but you'll also have this lead woman that comes in and she goes straight to the bride and she sings this chant and it goes like, and she'll say like it'll either be poetry or it'll be describing the bride or it'll be something about the bride and it, and she'll keep repeating this over and over that she'll go like oh we had da, 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 da. and then we had da, da. i'm gonna put a video in here because it would be easier for me to explain and i won't make an idiot out of myself like i just have <laughs> As a bride, you have to constantly have a smile on your face and you have to constantly be poised and you're wearing a big heavy dress. Um, so she's standing there, like looking all poised and, 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 and happy, while this woman is like up in her face, like quite close, saying this chant very loudly. She has to like remain eye contact with the woman that's saying it. It's very hard if you've ever tried to rem like retain eye contact with someone for more than like a few seconds, it becomes really difficult. So what happens next is that the Zephyr will then come up with the groom and the groom will take her and there'll be just like this massive party happening, often in like quite small corridors as you're going down into towards the car and things and they'll sing all the chants and everything and it's very emotional and often everyone will cry and like she's leaving her childhood home for the, you know, the last time. And everyone starts crying and things, but you can't stay in that, like, you can't be tearful for too long because then you've got the Zephyr and it's like, wow, we're doing a party now. So then you get to the wedding and like I said, it could be separate. So if it's a separate wedding, the men will go off into a separate hall and their hall, isn't the same as the women's hall. Like the women's hall is like decorated and you've got loud music and you've got like um, all the flashing lights and everything that you would usually get with a banging party. Um, is it banging? Um, so the men get put off into this other separate room 
and it's not decorated and they've got all chairs to sit in because obviously no one's going to be doing any dancing and they often have the, the, vo the music is also projected in there as well at the same volume so like it's hard for them to speak to each other as well and then they have to sit there for like two hours making small talk and drinking coffee and from what I understand it's quite a painful experience <laughs> And a lot of the time the women can see how bored the men are because they will project like videos, video like a live stream onto big screens in the women's sal. So you can see the men just sitting around like twiddling their thumbs, bored out of their minds. While the women are having a party, like you don't stop dancing the whole time you are there. It is like, it's just dancing, dancing, dancing. It's so much fun. When the dad comes in to do the dance, it's like, ah, it's so emotional. Everyone cries, they're all sobbing, and then the father is like in a room full of women, and he's like trying stoically not to cry. And if it's a semi-mixed wedding, then at the very end, the men will come in to the women's party and they will do devka. And this is like one of the best parts of the whole wedding because the men have been sitting there, bored out of their minds with like all of this pent up energy. And then they come in and then they like, they, they really go for it and you see men like flying through the air. If you don't know what Dubkit is, go and look up some YouTube videos. It's, it's awesome. And then finally, at the very end of the wedding, when everyone is leaving, you do the farde. I don't know if I rolled my R too hard there, sorry. So the farde is when everyone makes a convoy, or not everyone, but lots of people make a convoy with their cars, following the bride and groom all the way to their house to kind of like, to send them off. The farde, is actually, as far as I'm aware, illegal in Jordan because um, basically it causes really bad traffic. So um, everyone will like put their hazard warning lights on, everyone like their lights will be flashing, they'll be honking their horns, they'll have their music really, really loud. People will be standing outside the sunroof, standing outside the windows and they make like this convoy and they stop, they stop all of the traffic and it can be kind of annoying. So what they did was um, they've installed like cameras, like they have cameras at all of the traffic lights and things like that, but the cameras pick up certain behaviors in the cars, like streams of people with flashing lights. Um, and then if you get picked up for doing photo day, you get a fine. I don't know if the groom gets the fine for the whole party or like every individual gets a fine. Um, but what you often see is people will like do all of that stuff on like a side road as they're going down and then like when they get to the main roads, they all turn off their lights and act like they're normal. So guys, let me know if you would like a part two of Jordanian weddings or if you would prefer um, a comparison video between British weddings and Jordanian weddings. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ma'asalama, see you next Tuesday.